Welcome back to the channel, guys. We just got back from 3,000 miles of Rocky Mountain Race Week with the Black Wing. If you've seen the videos, you know. We have a lot of dirt on this car. It's probably the dirtiest it'll ever be. We're gonna show you just how effective some of our 1320 Street Shine products are. There are two that I wanna highlight today. There's our iron remover that's gonna melt the brake dust off of this. And then 3,000 miles of bug are just gonna disappear with our bug remover. Let me show you right now. After doing a rinse on the front of this car, we're gonna put our bug remover on and let it sit for about a minute. Now that it's set, we just have to wipe the bugs away and look how easy this is. <laughs> I've never done it on 3,000 miles worth of bugs. That is ridiculous. Look at that. Next is our iron remover, and this product turns red when it hits iron to show you that it's pulling it from the surface. You can use it on paint or your wheels. It's acid free, so it's safe on anything. Look how much red there is dripping off here. That's all iron deposits. We're gonna rinse it off, and it's gonna look amazing. That's some good right there. <laughs> Big shout out to JS Detailing for letting us use their detail bay. Hit the link in the description below for your 1320 Street Shine. Check it out today. What is up 1320 fans? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode of 1320 Garages. This week, we are in Tampa, Florida, checking out a garage by a good buddy of ours. They're really into Hondas and diesels and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, you guys might recognize the shop and the cars around me. We're gonna knock on the door and uh, see what they got for us today. What's up, Fred? What's up, guys? You guys How here you? for a garage tour? Yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. You guys are here in Florida at the Booster Boy shop. My name is Kyle. And I'm Wyatt. How's it going, fellas? Uh, bad, man. I guess we should probably open this main door. Maybe yeah. let a little more light in here. Hell yeah, let's do it. Fleet. Yeah, this is our spot. It's about, uh, what is it? A 2600 square foot it's a 40 by 60 so very nice very nice not bad houses all the projects for us does pretty well for us you guys used to be in Colorado when did you guys move down here was this the first you guys moved straight into this yeah straight into this I moved out here about three years ago now and then why it came maybe I think it was like two months after you did Maybe a little more than two Something months, but not like too long after why it came. Okay, okay. With me, and we both moved out from Colorado. All right. Down to this nice Florida weather. Very nice, yeah. Some full time Very hot Florida car stuff. I'm, I'm sure you guys appreciate that. You guys, yep. it's, it's uh, I don't know what the temperature is in Colorado right now, but it's not this. It's cold. Right. But we definitely had to get an AC unit installed. And <laughs> definitely helps keep it cool in here. This place isn't fully insulated yet either, just the roof, but it does pretty good during the summer. Nice, nice, nice. Well, show me around. This is the main shop. Let's start over, let's start, I guess, over here. What yeah, are we looking at? Right over here. So some of our square footage is taken up by this office space over here. This is where we fulfill all of our merchandise. We do it all in house. So we just have these shelves right here with all of our merch. So this is really just for t-shirt storage. And then in here, we fulfill the orders right here. It's nothing too crazy. Just a full in-house operation, all our little stickers, keychains, and all that good stuff. And then we have our bins and stuff ready to go for when we go to events and stuff like that. Okay. And then this room back over here is our kind of parts storage room that we a little overflow for the merch as well. So this is just where we have- Is this a lot of broken parts, parts or new parts or uh, gonna a be used? combination of all of it. Gotcha. So we got some brand new turbos. We also got used turbos. We got broken transmission parts. Um, it's somewhat organized. We got, you know, a spot for like all of our electronics and ECUs. We got all of our flywheels and clutches and stuff down here. We have a box full of like OEM Honda parts. We have lots of K-Series stuff laying around. Cause if you guys don't know who we are, we K-Swap a lot of vehicles. Yes, so you do. K-Series exhaust, manifold gaskets, intake manifold gaskets. Uh, we got a whole bunch of accessories for K-Series as well. And just kind of all the little stuff we have. We got wastegates laying around, we got our scooters for the events. Those carbon doors right there belong on the Civic that we're working on currently, but that's pretty much the office. So it does suck that that takes up some of our usable shop space, but mm -hmm. it's definitely nice to have all that because our shop is definitely a decent size and we're pretty happy with it, but it's also not the biggest shop in the world. Right. We only have enough room really for this one lift here. We were talking about putting other lifts over here, but some of our nicer cars we like to keep inside like these NSXs and stuff. So we also had talks about putting like two post or four post storage lists Stacker in here as well. Lifts, yep. <laughs> we just don't know if we want to really take up that much room and commit to that. So this works because we're always shimmying cars around and just kind of makes it simpler. Gotcha, gotcha. This lift looks like kind of overkill for Honda stuff, to be honest with you. Yeah, every now and then it'll see a truck or two. <laughs> a race truck, it's not a light one. I was gonna say, as many times as the transmission comes out, we need this big lift here. <laughs> yeah, so this is just our uh, Ben Pack two post lift. Right now why it's working on 
this thing, this is our 2JZ Rural Drive Civic they're working on. That's the transmission for it down there to M&M MTH 400 and the motor's back over there. So we're hoping for a little bit more reliability at the speeds we wanna go. The four cylinder stuff works great, but if we're trying to go bottom sevens, possibly high sixes consistently, um, it's just not as realistic with a four cylinder with a K-series and we want to try to build this to go on drag and drive. So it's a oh. cooling system, all that stuff. Shit. Okay. So I want a more gnarly drag and drive car because we're just kind of showing up with the fun stuff, but I kind of want something that can hopefully hang with the big dogs out there. Not looking to win, but if I'm at least in their class having a good time and running some fast, respectable times out of it, that's what we're looking for. And completing the week and all that yeah. other important drag and drive up, stuff. Hopefully. So. Right, right. All right, now since we're back here and we're already in here, let's go over to the few cars you have in here. Okay. I was going to say two real quick to show you just back in there. Oh, let's do it. There's I didn't little, know there was more yeah, rooms. There's a little more space, nothing crazy. It's just a little bathroom and stuff back here. So yeah, back here is just a little bathroom in the corner. Nothing too crazy. And then there's some tires behind this door <laughs> for storage. Good storage. And then we just got, you know, our, uh, like spray paint cans, oil, fluids in this cabinet right here. Um, these are our ignite barrels. We're actually down to our last one. Keep our fuel in here as well. So we only run the MR2 right now on Ignite 90. So all the other cars are just on pumpy 85 for the most part. But yeah, nothing too crazy in here. Just sink, fridge, and a little microwave for when we. But say, what is in the shop Next. fridge? We got to check out the shop fridge. Yeah, she might be pr pretty pretty light right, right now. now. Let me see. She's pretty light. We just got <laughs> some waters and some Sprite. We actually we just cleaned this out like a week ago because it got really grimy and gross, there, and we had it out there and we were power washing it. So. Yeah, not too. Water cool and Sprite. Right That's now. all you need. This yeah. is Florida. And then right here, this is our bolts and nuts assembly from boltsandnuts.com. This has definitely been one of the biggest game changers for us by far. So we have tons of fasteners and hardware here. So now we don't have to go to the hardware store down the street and it just saves us a whole bunch of time. And then right here next to it is just more used bolts. So this is stuff that, you know, we've taken off the cars and it's, it's organized as best we could. You right. Know, all our little Honda, it's mostly metric because we take a lot of Honda stuff apart but just some miscellaneous stuff down there. We got a little tub full of Honda Bond because it's every Honda boy's dream right here to have a full tub of Honda Bond just ready to go. We actually have a guy. What's that, the most extreme use of Honda Bond you've done? I don't know. I don't know if we should talk about that. We filled some pretty big holes with Honda Bond. <laughs> we usually use it when we're taking oil pans on and off and uh, rebuild the transmissions mostly. Gotcha, okay. But, all right, let's go over the, the whiffs we got in here. So in the back garage, we have the 2JZ Civic, and we rear-wheel drive, all that cool stuff. And then what do we got here? So if we start with this one, this is a 1,000 horsepower K-Swap NSX, currently the fastest NX, currently the fastest NSX in the standing quarter mile. It has a fully built K-Series. This one was built by a couple of buddies of mine, originally built by Brandon and uh, Matthew Stelly and they went way back in the MR2 world. So when I first built my MR2, this kind of got built a little after that and it came up for sale and I looked up to those guys and I had to hop on it once it came up for sale. So we took it to the drag strip and sure enough, first time out, it went at 8.8 at like 166 miles an hour, which no one really pushes this body style of NSX I, to do that. Yeah, I can't say I've seen anybody else other than you drag race one of these things. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen another one in the world do a wheelie but this one did a wheelie going down the drag strip a lot of guys do turn them into road course cars because right that makes sense road yeah, course yeah. cars but uh yeah this one is very fun very fast and with it being mid-engine and rear wheel drive they're very fast on the street because they can put the power down and Alex. they're what they're all aluminum aren't they yeah full aluminum body as well because i'm sure you guys have seen the mr2 video that you guys posted with yeah. many years ago yeah, how yeah. that thing just dominated that was Seeing that video is what inspired me to build my MR2 originally. Because when we started, I had my hatch. It was front wheel drive. Once you make like six, 700 horsepower, no matter how much weight you throw on the front of that thing, it's gonna just blow the tires mm -hmm. off. So I wanted to build an MR2 because that's back when we were street racing. I'm like, all right, I'm time. I'm ready to go fuck everybody up. Great but, platform for and it. And then too. as the channel grew, it turned into more drag racing and going down the right. strip and keeping it off the street and not having cops show up at our house. Right. So that's where, how the MR2 came about. And the NSX is just, a even better version of the MR2, at least in my opinion, there's more wheelbase, which will be better for the track. It's, it's like a bigger tire. MR2 XL. Yeah, exactly. There, uh, there you go. So I think there's potential for the NSX chassis to go faster, easier than the MR2 chassis can. Especially okay. it's also already lighter from factory. It's already aluminum, but that makes putting a cage in it 
a little more difficult and all that stuff. But we actually have a third NSX that's not here right now being built in Colorado that we're hoping to go even faster than the MR2 with. Damn. Okay, so drag NSX, drag MR2. What's the middle one? What do we got here? This is a stock NSX. So this is the high mile one or what? Yeah, high mile. I think it has like 200,000 on it. Got it for a really good deal for what it is. It's very clean. It was recently repainted. And we got this one to turn into a race car, but after I picked this one up, a different one came up for sale. It was already cut up, it was already gutted, it was already about to be a K-Swap Drag NSX. It okay. had a Lexan windshield, carbon fiber doors. Gotcha. It was already cut up and hacked up. And I got it for you know a decent enough deal to where I wanted to pick up this third NSX instead. I sent that one to my friend Hayden in Colorado to get the cage and stuff done. And now we just have this stock one kind of sitting here and I haven't decided what to do with it because this is the one that we were going to originally cut up and turn into the race car. But I also didn't want to cut up this NSX because it's such a good street car, I'd have to completely change everything on it for what I would want to do. So now you have a spare NSX you don't know what to do with. Yeah, it's just, gotcha. it's kind of there. That's rough. That's rough stuff, yeah, gentlemen. It's, that's it's rough stuff. tough life, man. All right, that's the drag NSX. This is your one you don't know what to do with yet. And then we have the MR2 over here. Yep. What do we got on the MR2 with the setup? So this one has a fully built K20. It used to have a billet block engine in it. Uh, that's actually back over with our guys at JBR just to get rebuilt. We had some issues with it, but we had it out at World Cup actually, and we were about to run a PB and then it didn't click into fifth gear. We ran our first 490 to the eighth. It's currently the fastest MR2 in the quarter mile. Um, big precision, 83, 85. Um, yeah, just aluminum rod motor with a sequential quave transmission, twin injectors on Ignite Red. And we are actually looking to put it on methanol here soon as well, because our Exhaust temps are getting a little up there. Both your mid-engine Japanese cars are the fastest of what they do. Yeah, the MR2 and NSX are both the that's, quickest and fastest in the quarter. That's a bit of a flex, I'd say. <laughs> is yeah. this, does this thing still start? Yeah, it runs it? right now. I could fire it up. Yeah. That's the MR2. Smells like a race car. Yeah, it smells really nice. Very nice, very nice. And that makes how much for power? Uh, the most we've seen was, I think it was like 1440 or something, or 1426 on FuelTech Hub Dyno. Holy shit. And we've it's ran more boost since then, and it's on a bigger turbo. So we're probably leaning on 1500. Based on the fuel usage, it's about 1600. Jesus. Yeah, especially on that last pass, the test day after World Cup. It was about to be on a pretty solid rip. Yeah, Jesus. So. All right, let's take a look at the other stuff. What do you got out here in the yard? All right, so the yard. If you guys come over here, so this is the Platacy. Of course, Platacy. Our most recent build. So this is a Tesla Model S Plaid with a 01 Honda Odyssey minivan body on top of it. Was Pretty, pretty to, straightforward. Yeah, I was looking to create the world's <laughs> ultimate sleeper, and I think we did just that. Uh, over here is just kind of like a junkyard. We get this stuff cleared out every now and then. We have a scrap guy that comes, so this is just cut up stuff that we throw up over here is that a is that a honda Bugatti? yeah no one has seen that actually that's um, a honda Gotti. it's really not off limits but yeah that is that is a Honda Gotti. Oh, what the i've fuck? never seen that <laughs> yeah. i was like i know what they're trying to do here but that's not what i haven't introduced it to the channel it's oh, just sitting back there it was a gift it? Yeah, you guys can check it out you guys can get the inside scoop i wanted to do like a really funny reveal video on it it just never happened maybe this is it it'll what still come the hell? <laughs> What do you guys think the chassis is? I don't. It's I mean, if be, we have it, is it a what Honda? do you expect? It's a Honda. Honda Civic. Yeah, you'll just lift the hood up and you'll find out right away. Prelude or what? Is this like a Civic Accord? It's what a we, Civic. What generation? Uh, EG. So like 92, 95. <laughs> so it has a turbo D16 Z6 in it. And I guess it was built a long time ago. And at one point, a lot of time and money went into this thing to make Obviously. it how it is because it has like it has a crazy sound system in it. i mean look at the seats they have civic gaudy stitched into the seats like they definitely was this a marketplace find 
So I got it from Tavarish, the YouTuber Tavarish. Okay. He got it off eBay or something, and he made some videos with it. He was going to crush it. He was going to run over it with a monster truck or do something crazy with uh -huh. it. And he ended up not doing that. He's like, hey, you want this thing? Like, I'm just going to get rid of it. And I was like, sure. So I stuck it back here, and it's, it's sat ever since. I got it fired up. We drove it down the road. It backfires really loud. That's, That's a pretty hilarious. rowdy two-step for what it is. That's Because it had a stock ECU in it. So it came to me, and I plugged in one of my Hondatas, and I set up a gnarly two-step and stuff on it. I got it shooting fireballs underneath there. But, uh, yeah, so that's all that. This is uh, an 06 Porsche Cayman S. I picked this one up almost two years ago now. It's just been, like, my daily. And I do have some plans for this thing in the future. But right now it still runs okay. The motor has a slight piston slap. The Caymans are a little known for that. Mm. So it has like 140,000 miles. She's on her way out probably, but it takes a long time, I guess, for the engines to let go on these things. So I'm just going to keep driving until she lets go because okay. it's been a good car other than that. It still runs really good. I actually have no idea how long it's going to go, but that one's going to have a motor swap at some point. And then this is just a 2021 Type R. We just recently gave this one away. Full bolt-ons, makes 350 wheel horsepower, nothing too crazy. And the giveaway winner is coming to pick that one up actually here in a couple days. Nice, very nice. And then this over here is a Tesla Model S that caught on fire. And we still have to figure out how to dispose of this thing. But this one came about before we cut up the other Model S. So before I took a perfectly good Tesla that is worth a lot of money and make it worth, you know, hardly anything. Mm -hmm. After I cut the body off, I wanted to test that the van body would fit. So we got this one and even though it was burnt up and stuff, it was still good enough for me to cut the body off. And I had the wheelbase and stuff on this side that was still pretty untouched from the fire. And I was able to put the van body on top of this and just kind of confirm my thoughts on how it would go together. And then once I saw that that was good to go, we pulled the trigger and cut the body off the other Tesla. So this was Tesla. a fitment test mule right yep, here. Yep, she was just a test dummy gotcha. for the van body before I hacked up a good one. And yeah. Suzuki sidekick, yes. what do we got here? So this one is currently engineless because her motor went to Wyatt's Corolla that you guys will see in a second. So Wyatt just went on sick week, he hurt the rotary that was in it, and this one had the same engine. Nothing in there right now, but it normally has a 13B two rotor, and it goes to a Ford C4 transmission. This one's an automatic. We originally built it as like a fun little burnout car to kind of take to Cletus's events, stuff like that. But it's also kind of nice when it's actually all cleaned up. It looks pretty dirty right now, but it's in really good shape. And it looks like it's pretty clean, honestly. I didn't want to beat it up too bad. That's fair. So, we might actually put a manual back in it just so we can kind of enjoy the car more. The original reason we have an auto in it is for the burnouts, stuff like that. Right. But kind of like dumping clutches and just kind of having fun that way. So we'll see. But yeah, that one has a two rotor in it. It made like probably 450 horsepower. I think oh, it man. ran a low 11, if not a high 10. So it was pretty quick for what it was. Oh yeah. But fun little car. And then this was my OG van over here. So I was going to originally cut this one up to turn into the Platacy but it was easier for me just to go to the junkyard and find one that already had the motor and stuff already pulled out because we'd have to find a place for all this crap or like throw it away. And it was actually less work just to go to the junkyard and get a shell to cut the floor out and go work from there. smarter, not harder. Exactly. There you go. There so you now go. we got two of them and we might have another Tesla on the way and we might end up with two <laughs> platices, so. <laughs> okay, so we got, geez, how many how many cars do you have? Do you even count? Do you even know? I'm not sure, probably around I guess would be like 15. We have a couple more in Colorado as well. I got the Prelude out there and some other stuff, but yeah, somewhere around there. Okay. Well, what do we got? What do we got over here now? So this is just a Honda Pilot. This is Ryan's. So this is just what he drives to work every day. That's why it's CRV. So those are their dailies. Big Honda guys out here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This right here is our smart car. This, Push vehicle? Yep. Or what do you? Okay. She is for the MR2 because when the MR2 has the billet engine in it, we need. A push car to Fools race car push it to and from the lanes, yeah, because it has no cooling system. So I can actually go ahead and move this one out of the way real quick. <laughs> That's all she wrote, boys. All right. All right. Now what do we got? Oh, the Wago. Yep. Hell so yeah. these two right here are kind of the more OG cars that started the channel. So this was the hatch, obviously. This was my first real race car. I learned pretty much everything on this one. And the setup is still pretty much the same as it was almost 
six, seven years ago, Damn. Other, than, other than it being on a fuel tech now and being all wheel drive, um, the turbo kit, the motor, all of that has been unchanged after, after all these years. So here pretty soon we're gonna beef it up a little bit more, get the engine bay painted. And then I got the outside painted recently. But then we got Wago over here. So this one's just a stock K series all wheel drive. So this is the car that all of the Honda guys are stealing their all wheel drive parts out of. Mm -hmm. So all those all wheel drive Hondas you see, they take the parts out of these wagons because these came factory with the drive shaft and the diff and they gut them out and they put all that stuff into their race car. So it's pretty rare to find one of these actually all wheel drive with all of its components still intact because so many of them have just been scavenged. So I don't plan on taking anything off this because I really like how they are. And uh, yeah, this one makes like 450 horsepower, nothing too crazy. But it runs good. I think this one's been like a 10.4. Oh, so damn. So it's definitely pretty quick. That's actually, yeah, actually, I want to say it makes like 550, maybe almost 600. That's a, that's a pretty solid yeah. number for that. Yeah, we cranked it up a little bit more. I forgot. Very nice. And then over here, we got this Hoopty. So this oh, is a hell. twin turbo J-Series mated to a STI all-wheel drive transmission. This one got put on the back burner a little bit. We were making pretty good progress with it. Right now, it does start up, and you can click it into gear and puts it around the yard but we need to finish up the cooling system, get the front end completely on this thing, and just do a little more work to the drivetrain. It also has no brake rotors or anything on it, so the brakes haven't been done yet. Gotcha. But this was just a setup that came out of our 240, and this guy had this Subaru shell laying around that I got for next to nothing, and another friend of ours had this adapter plate and we were able to adapt the J-Series to the all-wheel drive STI trans. I think the best part is the engine sticks out farther than the yeah, and it, car. Yeah, and it looks ridiculous. Yeah, that's the best part, for sure. And then the minivan. And then the minivan. So this one is the Routacy. The other electric one with the Tesla underneath it is the Platacy. I guess the story for building this one came from the hatch, because I used to street race the hatch a lot mm -hmm. in the OG days, and this has an H22 in it. As fun as it was to race the Civic, I wanted something even more like sleeper and discreet, right. especially for like making content. I thought it'd be funny just to build a really badass sleeper. Uh, we were originally going to build one of the second gens with the V6, but the parts were expensive and kind of hard to come by. There wasn't much support for the, mm -hmm. the van. So I found out that you can fit an H22 in the first gen Honda Odyssey, and there was literally mounts to flop it right in there. So I copied the setup that was in the hatch, and I put it into a first gen Odyssey, and that's how this one was born. And it used to be front wheel drive, it used to have a full exhaust with a cutout, and it was actually really quiet and it was sleeper, but I could never really put that power down, being front wheel drive. Right. So we eventually took all that stuff out and put a K-Series in it, because at the time there was no way to make an H all wheel drive. So I put a K-Series in it with the all wheel drive sequential transmission, so now it is all wheel drive with a fully built K-Series, and this one makes just over a thousand horsepower. God damn. And it has a hood exit out the front. So now it's not as sleeper when you see it roll up on radials and a hood exit, you know. But I think it's something's just up, as but, cool. But yeah, it's still a minivan at the end of the day, and it still has its full interior in it, and we recently went a 9.5 in this one at 153. <laughs> So That's we have wild. the two fastest Honda Odysseys on I, the property. I was about to say, didn't yours? Did yours? You did a nine five in the in the yep. Platacy too. So both both do nine fives. Yep. That's Technically, the Platacy has it by a couple hundredths. Okay. I think that one went a nine fifty five, and this one went like a nine fifty nine or nine fifty seven. Gotcha. But they're both right there on nine five. Nice. So the only two nine second Odysseys you will see are on this property. That's pretty awesome. That's, that's kind of a lot of flexes going on over here. Yeah, they're they're weird flexes, but. <laughs> they work. <laughs> and this one I can back it out too. Sounds like a Honda race car that we see like World Cup. Everyone freaks out when they see the turbo because it's so big under there. God, it really is. Compared to the, like everything, it's just crazy. Yeah, it's really just because it's a large frame housing with the smallest inducer wheel that you can get for that size gotcha. housing so it looks way bigger than it actually yeah, it looks like puts out horsepower wise and crazy yeah yeah well that one can actually 
be opened up, I believe, to like a 104. Oh my God. So this same housing is capable of like a 3,000 horsepower turbo, but it's just the smallest inducer for that housing. Gotcha. And we got toys over here? Yeah, toys a couple toys, a couple trailers. So this right here is our trailer parking. This is our Texas Pride two car. Uh, this trailer has been a huge game changer for us when we first got it because um, I still have Cletus's OG McFarland racing trailer over there and that did great, but we needed to take multiple cars to events and we eventually got this one and it was just game changer for us. So now it really just sits until we do events because we end up taking the race trailer that we just picked up. This one's brand new. And now we take this one a lot more because it is decked out with tools and all the stuff we need at the track, whereas the open trailer, uh, we'd have to take stuff from in the shop, put it in the bed of the truck, where this one is just ready to go. So we have a jack in here, all of our tools in the toolbox, which is locked right now. It has this AC. This is very nice, oh, hell yeah. Yep, got these cardboard flaps just to help direct the air, because that's another thing when we're out at the track, especially once it's closer to Summer, having the AC in here is so nice when we're on the laptop, just trying to make changes to the cars and stuff. So yeah, this is our newest trailer and the two car definitely could not do it without this one either. So I think a lot of people don't realize that to go to the track and stuff, it's one thing to have the car and take care of that, but having like a good tow rig and setup is right. another huge deal. So that was another thing that last year I just kind of said screw it and I wanted to upgrade our tow rig and our trailer, so we have these now. And then if you look back over there, that's our new truck. F450? Yeah, F450. But I guess before we get to that, we can show the the skis and the boat. So this is a Yamaha GP1800 I picked up recently. We were just gonna do some bolt-ons to this, make it fast and fun, because Fuel Tech actually came out with a harness to adapt from the jet skis stuff to the Fuel Tech. So this one will be on a Fuel Tech here soon. Really? Yeah. So that's the main reason I picked this one up. So we could put it on fuel tech because I thought that would be cool. So this one's a Sea Dew RPX 260. This one's supercharged, pretty much as full bolt ons as you could go before you like put a turbo on it. And this one makes probably like three, 350 horsepower. Sounds pretty rowdy and it will go mid 80s on the water. So right now, this one will blow the Yamaha away. But once we do some stuff to the Yamaha, it should blow this one away. I'm a land guy, so going 80 on the water sounds scary as hell. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we took out our friend JP Racing's once, and I went, went, I went 101 on it once, and I told him I'd probably never do that again. Oh my god! But we'll see. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I might touch it one more time. But it's it's fast. That's wild. Yeah, I figured if we moved out here to Florida, we need to get some water well, toys. That's and fair. That is. We kind of see what it's about because we definitely don't have this stuff in Colorado. It's not as common. And then back over here is our jet boat. You guys could probably guess what this is powered by. Like many of our other vehicles here, it has a Honda K-Series. That's sick. With a turbo, obviously. So this one probably makes a solid 450 horsepower when it's cranked up. Makes almost 20 pounds of boost through this uh, Comp Turbo Oilless Turbo. So that's really nice because it's the oilless one, so we didn't uh -huh. have to tap into the pan and do all that. So that's a very common setup for the jet ski guys and stuff like that. Because gotcha. they don't have to rely on the oil pressure to help keep the turbo lubricated. But uh, yeah, this one's also on a fuel tech. If you look right up here, just like about everything else we got going on over here. So that will power on and then we could fire her up and she's ready to go. We actually just had it on the water last weekend <laughs> and did great. You can jump over logs, go in really shallow water and just beat them up. They got a three quarter inch layer of polyurethane on the bottom. so. They're really robust little boats and I was about to say, that's, they're that's, just really fun. That's crazy. So these are the trucks. So this is our new one. This is a Ford F450 Platinum. This was probably the biggest investment I've ever made. It was. This is the biggest investment I've ever made. At one time? At one time, yeah. So I had the Dodge before, which at that time was the biggest investment I ever made. Every time I got a truck, I was always like, man, this is these are not cheap. Hondas are way cheaper. Yeah, I was like, why can't I just tow stuff with my Honda Civic? <laughs> but yeah, this eventually broke down and I was hemming and hawing about getting another used truck, something with like low miles, like maybe 40, 50,000. It's pre-owned, get a little bit of a break there. But I was like, dude, with how much we drive, I'm gonna put another 40, 50,000 on it in a couple of years. Right. It's already gonna be at 100,000. Like, and then, you know, I found out, just get a new truck can get a warranty, it's a lot more money, but I was like, it will be better for us, I think. And if anything happens, we can take it to a dealership, it's covered for the next three years or 200,000 miles. That just sounded really good for us. So I ended up getting the Ford F450, it's been great. 
I love this truck and then this thing has still just been sitting over here with a blown up motor that we're gonna hopefully fix here soon. And then back over here is the, our LS240. I remember this thing. Okay. Yeah, this is what originally had that twin turbo J series from right. the Subaru in it. It was our burnout car. It shot big old fireballs, was really loud and chaotic. And it worked really awesome, just the steering setup wasn't the best. Uh, and we also had to hang the starter under the oil pan because the J series and CD09 transmission that we have in this thing, none of those are engine side for the None of those are starter side, so there's nowhere for the starter to go. Like, oh. There's no starter slot on the J engine, right. and there's no starter slot on the CD09 oh. trans. So we had to uh, put it up underneath through a little hole on the adapter plate, and that made the steering all complicated, and that's why I ended up just taking it out and putting a LS in it that's just a known setup that has mounts and everything good to go. So, I mean, this thing hasn't ran in legit probably six months, and it's probably dead as shit. I mean, I got lights on the switch, but I think that's all you're going to get. Yeah, she's done. So, it is what it is. Yeah, this one doesn't get too much love. It was just a burnout car. I feel bad because we kind of beat it up, and it was pretty nice for a 240 when I, I got it. I was about to say, it's all one color, and I think that's the indicator if it's a nice 240 or not. So. I didn't know you had a fan boat. Yeah, hmm. so this is uh, old Skippy, our <laughs> airboat. Okay. <laughs> she has one test run and it didn't sink, so it was a successful that, test Hey, that's run. successful. So, Did the engine run the whole time? Yes. Very good. No issues. Two it for just, two. It didn't have the right springs in the wastegate and it was over boosting, which was a little scary. Like it was, it was trying to take off on us and I was like, all right, we're, we're bringing it back. This thing's scaring me. Um, so yeah, this has a K-Series as well. Right. And it has a custom belt reduction drive box that came from Russia. So I actually had to wait almost two years to get it because the first one got lost in shipping and the dude had to wait for another batch of them to be made and then because right when i moved to florida the first thing i did was like i got to do something with an airboat because that just yeah sounded very florida man to me so i got this one but then the box took forever to get here eventually it showed up and now we have a case swapped airboat and we got a nice cincinica carbon prop on there that's the prop alone is worth more than the entire boat and setup. I was going to say that the drivetrain looks like it's worth more than everything else combined. For yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's about right. Very nice. That's how a lot of our stuff is. <laughs> if you look at all the Hondas and everything, what's under the hood is the most valuable. Everything else is kind of whatever. But I think this one does run still. This one should have a chart. We put like a good marine battery in this thing. What else we got? I mean, that's how big, about how big, it. How big land-wise is the property? Uh, just over an acre. Okay. But I just tell everybody an acre. I think it's technically 1.1. But yeah, we have up to the street there. This is all our grass and all of our land. And then this is our neighbor right here. Um, the guy on that side down there actually has a whole bunch of project cars in that little shop right there. Mm -hmm. And the day I moved out here, he actually was standing out there. He's like, Kyle, is that you? I'm like. <laughs> Perfect, and he was out here two-step. He has like a Scion TC that has some stuff done to it, and he's out there two-stepping it. And I was like, I think I'm gonna like Florida. Car guy neighborhood. Yeah, for and sure. then right here, you know, these guys got chickens and just farm animals. So we're kind of on the outskirts of Tampa. It's pretty country-ish, you could say, right where we're at. But I really like it out here. So yeah, just over an acre, and then we have the house over here with the little pool area enclosed with the fence right there. And that's why it's truck and trailer. And then the old McFarland racing trailer sitting over there. Oh, yeah, this, this is a nice a, setup right this here. This is a setup back here, yeah. So we got this nice little pool and a hot tub. Definitely fun for having parties and people over. Dude, this is, this is makes it like the shop back there, jealous of the shop and all the room you have and everything. And then the pool too. This is not a small pool either. It's yeah, really it's nice. Yeah, it's really nice. And when I first moved here, I was kind of like, I didn't really want the pool because I was worried it was going to cost a lot to maintain. And I'm like, how much am I going to really use a pool? Right. But we actually use it pretty often, and now that we have it here, I'm, 
I wouldn't have it any other way. Hell yeah. We need a, like now if I were to move, I'm like, dude, we need a pool and hot tub. We need a pool, yeah, yeah. It's actually really nice when we're just chilling and it's hot out, we can hop in the pool. Uh, the guy that owned this property prior to us owned a well and septic tank business. So most of the properties ran on well water and our master bath is ran on well water, but the other half is still on city water and this property has four septic tanks. Something I didn't show you guys over there is there's full RV hookups under that awning over really? there with a septic tank so you can dump the waste as well. So there's a septic tank in the corner for the RV hookups. The bathroom has its own septic tank for the shop. This outhouse right here no way. has a septic tank. So we have a little outhouse. We need to clean it up, but it's really nice for when we have people over, especially when you're swimming, you don't want people tracking water in the house. We got this little outhouse that so a guy being obsessed, obsessed with septic ended up being pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it worked out pretty good for us. And then the fourth septic tank is, I think, for this bathroom over here. Gotcha. But this house was built in like the 60s and then it's been expanded on several times. It used to be tiny. And uh, yeah, the dude did a really good job with it. The guy that we got it from lived here, um, I think almost 40 years. So he did all of this. Oh, so he wow. knows everything. He put the pool in. He built all this himself. Like I was telling him when they were checking out the AstroTurf, I guess they used to have Super Bowl parties here, and that's why it has the AstroTurf out there. And it's definitely a good, definitely a cool setup. I like it. Yeah, this is very nice. All right, now what else we got? Wyatt? Yeah. Wyatt's stuff is in the front garage, yeah? Yep, yeah, we could go grab him here in a second. Um, you can get, so this is the back side of the house, and then yeah all his stuff's right in there so i guess you, we'll go grab him real quick you could fit like half a dozen cars just under there yeah you could we used to keep the sidekick parked right under there where he's standing for the longest time every now and then we'll pull a smart car up in here if we need to move stuff out of the way because we can just kind of put some planks down right there and drive stuff back over here this is a setup right here yeah man. it's a solid like spot it. i'm i'm definitely happy about it you want me to go grab wyatt and we can yeah let's do that his stuff all right, we're gonna go find Wyatt and see what he's got cooking up in the front garage with his stuff. Yeah, here is my humble abode. A little bit small, but uh, she gets the job done. Hell yeah. So yeah, right up front, we got my bike. Uh, this thing just kind of sits because I don't really ride it a ton, even though we've got the weather to do it. And then uh, my two babies here. We just got the Corolla done. You guys have probably seen some videos on that. We just uh, saw that thing at Sick Week, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just got it done, or just got through Sick Week with it. Made it through the whole week with relatively not a lot of problems and then we have my truck here which did sick week last year that thing was an absolute tank i really wish i had as little of problems this year as i did last year with that thing so yeah that's my uh 1500 horsepower truck the corolla makes around 400 horsepower and uh they're both a blast to drive so and the corolla's rotary corolla's and rotary, rotary what, engine, yeah. what engine you got in the truck uh the truck is a lb7 duramax so it's a uh, diesel powered, uh, like I said, about 1500 horsepower. Jesus. It's got a 91 millimeter turbo on it, runs four stages of nitrous. So. Jesus Christ. Yeah, all of it. The uh, the poor transmission behind it doesn't really love it. That's it. What transmission is in it? It is a 4L80E, so like a light duty pickup truck transmission. Okay, okay. So, and what's the best ET in the truck? Uh, it has gone in 876 at 154. Is, and that, that, was, is that scary in something this big? Uh, not really, honestly. It's like, this is way more, the Corolla is way more sketchy to drive than the truck is. So the truck's got power brakes, power steering, the whole deal. So it makes it pretty easy to go down the track with. And uh, this year our goal is actually to go quite a bit faster with it. The uh, 870 pass was the only time I actually ran it out in the quarter mile and uh, we've just been fighting some little stuff ever since then. So we haven't been able to make a whole lot of clean passes, but it did go a 551 in the eighth. So, so that's your best best eighth? Month. Yeah, yeah, that was last year at uh, Ultimate Callout Challenge. We did that, so Fuck yeah. hopefully have it back out there this year and be able about to- About to say, are you going to UCC this year? Yeah, yeah, I won't be competing in UCC. I just run their ODSS class, um, but we'll be out there racing for sure. Uh, that's definitely a show not to miss. I mean, you guys have been there before. You guys know what it's about. I think we might be going there again this year. It's yeah. just, it's, there's, it's the craziest diesel stuff you'll yeah. ever see. Yeah, it's definitely the premier diesel event in the state. So oh, yeah. a little bit of everything there, but that is the goal with it. Um, and then, yeah, just in here, we got a whole bunch of tools. I mean, it's a little tight, like I said, but uh, kind of going through cleaning stuff. We've got the welder, cabinet full of stuff, snap on toolbox over there and another toolbox in the other corner here with all my wiring stuff. and a lathe and a brake and a bandsaw on the ground over here it's, it's you know it's a little tight you got to kind of push some stuff out of your way to work in here but it's definitely better than working outside on the floor thousand percent yeah hundred percent thousand percent all right guys 
So now that we've seen all of your guys' stuff, I want to take a few of the cars out. What one are we going to take out first? So right now we're going to go in the Routacy. Routacy. This is the gas-powered minivan. Yep, on the 85,000 horsepower all-wheel drive Honda Odyssey. This should be fun. Is this is this standard, this, this wrinkling? So it just adds to the sleeper look of it, but what really happened here is it was parked about right where that Civic is, and we had a storm come through and a big old branch off the tree broke and hit it right here. I think actually that, that, that adds, literally adds character. Yeah, it just adds- the hood in. I tried to hammer it out from the backside as best I could, but the whole hood had a massive branch on it and it boated in pretty good. So. Damn. Now she just has a wrinkled hood. Okay. Well, let's take her for a cruise. Still out the horn, turn signals, headlights, tailwinds. Okay, so why, why is this one of your top cars? Why are we taking this one out? Is this a favorite child of yours? Yeah, this one definitely has, this one's definitely responsible for a lot of the growth on the channel. I was gonna say, how many, how many of your subscribers would you say came from just this thing? Probably a solid chunk, like I'd say at least a hundred thousand. Really? The year we built this was the same year we went to the project car challenge in Florida. That was our first time meeting Queenis and a ton of these other YouTubers, and that was our biggest month of growth almost to this day. Really? We talked. Yeah, back when we took this out in the half mile and we did all that stuff. So this band was like a really big one. do well uh shoots big old fireball sounds cool and lately it has stayed together well i was gonna say it was really good at breaking axles but we fully upgraded the drivetrain and it's been pretty solid knock on wood but what does it do not well at all what's the one thing is like this is the worst thing it does as a car right now probably launch in the back strip okay. i have no e-brake or anything so it does not launch at all This is, I was, I want to say rowdy, but that's like what you're, it's a rowdy yeah, sea. It's a rowdy sea. Well, She's living up to her name. Thanks for the ride. This has been, I've seen this car, I've seen this car race, I don't know how many years now, and it's really cool to ride in the thing, and it's fucking, this thing moves out, dude. Yeah, I've been telling Kyle, like, we need to do oh, dude, for years. Dude, dude. All right, that was number three. Rowdy sea is rowdy. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, this is the coolest minivan I've ever ridden. Oh, so then good. He has another minivan that's just as fast. Okay. But not as race car-y as far as like, we're probably gonna be able to qu like quietly talk like this. Yeah, we'll be able to just have a normal conversation. No one will suspect anything. <laughs> see it go by, be like, well, yeah. They'll see the van go by and look at, they'll just say, look at that piece of junk. And <laughs> Because it's like four different shades of gray. And... Yeah, this one's pretty obvious when it goes by. Okay. You so know where the sound's coming from. Exactly. The tires. Exactly. It's definitely fun, lives up to its name. I love this thing, but it just grew, it just outgrew the sleeper aspect of what it was supposed to be. It's it's freaking awesome. I love this thing. This Hell is yeah. the coolest minivan I've ever ridden in. For All sure. right. Let's go All check right, out so number let's two. Let's go check out the uh, Platyce. Yeah, we go hop. All right, let's go and check out Platyce. Platyce's number two? Yeah. All righty. So they got quite the collection. They have two minivans that both do nine fives. Obviously, the Rowdacy, and then the Platacy. I've ridden in a Plaid before. They're wild. Literally 1,000 horsepower, all-wheel drive. They get down from a stop. This one's going to be a little different. This is so wild. And it's so quiet. Yeah, well, there's no fire-breathing K-Series in this one. So... You found this thing, it was wrecked, but not, yeah. but the, all the drivetrain was good. Yeah, it was just rear-ended and it came up on Copart and it was pretty much exactly what I was looking for because I was trying to find one that didn't have too much damage. I still wanted it to run and drive okay. I didn't want to deal with, you know, any wiring or electronics because I'm not very familiar with any of the Tesla stuff. So mm -hmm. it was listed as a run and drive on Copart. So I went, picked it up after we won the bid and it eventually turned into this. So this is a Model S Plaid. Yeah. Instead, cause I could tell, first of all, because we're so damn low in this thing. Yeah, so the seating position's a lot lower naturally because it's made for a sedan. Right. And that's why I wanted to do it again with the Model X Plaid because the seating position will be higher. Uh, everything will be lined up better to fit the minivan box. Is the, is the uh, wheelbase the same in the X? Yep. Oh. Both the same exact wheelbase. You don't know what I'm going to do right now. <laughs> yeah, well, on race cars, that's like I can tell when they're about when they're building up or when they're about to do a pull. This thing, you just do it whenever. It's I, I have no idea. Yeah, on the Rada, see you hear the turbo getting ready. Like you know that I'm you're ready to go. This thing is. If it wasn't for the wind noise, you just closed up the gaps in the, in the body for the wind noise, this thing would just, you yeah, have you really no idea. Want. Yeah, we still have the gaps right there, so you can actually, like where I'm sitting, I can see the tire rolling. Yeah, same over here, yeah. Off. So once we get all the gaps and stuff sealed up, it'll be really quiet in here. God, this thing's just got to be the biggest sleeper in the world. I, like, I think it's safe to say this is the best sleeper that exists right now. Thousand horsepower, all-wheel drive, electric. Like, it doesn't make any noise. There's nothing to muffle. Muffle. It's just, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you need it to go, it's just ready. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. It's crazy how much power they have. Now, what was there anything that did not work when you got the car? Because it was totaled, right? Totaled car? It was totaled from the insurance, yeah. So it had some bent frame rails in the back and stuff, but everything actually worked perfectly. Okay. There's not one thing that didn't function as it should. Like, really? We put a new back hatch on it, the autopilot worked again, like everything was fine. So right now the only things that don't work just aren't plugged in. So we don't have the autopilot stuff hooked up. That mounts in a little camera array to the windshield. It's actually up under that plate right now. Gotcha. So we're going to try to put that back up there, remount it up so we can have the autopilot working again, and just do all of that stuff. Now i got to ask you the same questions. What does this car do really well, and what does it not do well at all? Well, it, it works well all the time. Like I this is the most reliable vehicle you own I would much? say so. I okay. mean, I have almost no doubt in my mind that this will not leave us stranded, broken down. We don't got to worry about an axle braking or the motor blowing up, whereas we have to worry about those problems in the other race cars. I mean, to make this kind of power out of like a four cylinder, you're going to run into some reliability issues at some point. Sure. Whereas in this thing, 
it's just going to work every time. It just does a really good job at doing what it needs to do. It's pretty much a stock car other than the van body. So It's wild to think about, too. It's yeah, just, it's just completely OEM Tesla. I tell everybody it's just like a big RC car, and I just swap the body on it. Pretty much. Because underneath it's the same thing. And what does it not do well at all? What's the worst um, thing about driving this? It's almost too quiet. Oh, really? It's almost too boring in a way. Like, it does work well, and it's exciting when you floor it and do all that stuff, but there's something about the race cars that make you feel a little more in touch with the car when you're driving, pushing the clutch, shifting it. It's almost just a little boring for me. I'm glad that it works so good, but it just feels like it's cheating almost. Yeah, I could see that. Like when we took it on sick week, I didn't really get the sick week experience. I was just cruising. I didn't have to worry about something breaking in the track or any of that. All I had to worry about was finding a charger. And that wasn't as fun as, you know, getting in there and on the cars. What's your favorite kill you've had in this thing? Uh, recently we were driving it back from sick week with the generator, everything loaded up in this thing, and this dude pulls up on the on-ramp in a Maserati. <laughs> this dude and his girlfriend, and I, he comes up hauling ass and I just match his speed perfectly. He's kind of looking at us like, what the heck? And then you can tell he floors it and takes off and I just leave him in the dust. <laughs> and he comes back over. He comes back over, his girlfriend's in there like laughing, he's laughing, and he's just giving up a thumbs up, and it was just, it was a cool feeling. That's gotta be- I'm like, that's what we built this That's gotta for. be awesome. Yeah, hell yeah. I'm gonna give it a little cheetah stance real quick here. I'll let this guy go. We go full foot brake, and then, I'm sure you've been in the Tesla before. Mm -hmm. I won't take forever, but I'm let her. Holy fuck! Take off there. Oh my god. <laughs> you just hear those tires just barely chirping. It really is like one, it's like the best traction control system. It's out. as good as it gets. Yeah. Because it doesn't have to, like, like you said, it doesn't tell the combustion motor to do anything to get the wheels yeah. to, it even just you, goes right forward. Even if you have the sensors in place to know that you're slipping, you have to, you're at the mercy of that combustion cycle of the motor and where you're at in power. Is the turbo lit now? Is it not? Mm -hmm. Your RPM range is so different power-wise on those big turbo cars or whatever it may be. So from a really loud thousand horsepower Odyssey to a much yeah. quieter one. Yeah, that was wild. Thank you for the ride. That was crazy. Oh, hell yeah, brother.
this car do really well, and what does it not do well at all? It makes all of the right sounds. Okay. Very good. Fair, fair. Stopping does not do that very good. <laughs> the uh, stock brakes from 74. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. I've got go-karts with bigger brakes on. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, the, that's its pros and cons. Okay. two are fast and they're pretty serious about going fast this thing's just a, this is like life to party i might need this it, thing yeah. likes to party this it thing does. has a good time yeah and i love how you timed out the explosion going off <laughs> right as you passed dude the first one i was like oh that was loud and the second one went off i was like i can't hear anything <laughs> my ears were ringing it was right. crazy like i was telling fred man the things this does really well is makes all the right noises yeah, yeah. It makes all the right all the right noises. The suspension is old as shit, so it body rolls like it's a <laughs> like a truck from the nineties. But yep. it's yeah, this is a good it's a good party. Good Hell time. Yeah. Hell Number yeah. one was good. Yep. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this 1320 garage. Shout out to the Boost Boys, Kyle and Wyatt. Thank you guys very much for the rides and the cars and everything and showing us around. First time I've been to you guys' property. It's actually pretty impressive. I'm jealous of the big shop, the pool, the garage, everything. It's, yeah, it's, you're it's, more than welcome to come by any time, hop in the pool. Oh, I'm going to say, say, I think you just have to jump in. Off I, the I'm, roof. I might have to do that. <laughs> I might have to do that. Do you guys have any garages we should know about, anything crazy like this or crazier? Put it in the comments below and we'll check it out. See you guys in the next episode.